Animal Education Series. Today I'm here with Steph at the Pennsylvania Bat Rescue. Hello. Hello. What kind of bat do we have here? This is a male big brown, and this is our most common species in Pennsylvania. He's also big browns are the second largest species in Pennsylvania. They are a crevice dwelling species. So these guys are typically found in your barns, your attics, and occasionally caves and mines. What do these bats eat? These guys in the wild will eat uh, mosquito-sized insects, and sometimes larger. They will also eat uh, small beetles. In captivity, we feed them mealworms along with some vitamin supplements. Can you tell us why bats are nocturnal? Well, bats are nocturnal for several reasons. One being that a lot of the night flying insects is what they consume, so there's different insects during the day than there is the night. And also, they try to avoid predation from such as red-tailed hawks, hawks, falcons, and songbirds, even blue jays. This poor guy uh, was rescued and somebody found him being attacked by blue jays. So, he's still overcoming, overcoming his injury. This is a female eastern red bat. So the males are a little bit different than the females. The males tend to have a brighter orange coat than the females. The females have a white tipped fur. And these are what we call foliage roosting bats. So these bats only roost in trees. So they love uh, the cottonwood trees. Um, and they, they kind of hang like a dead leaf. So they hang by one foot and they wrap their fur tail around them and they go to sleep. So I'm going to give her a little bit of water. She might be thirsty. And these bats are solitary bats. Unlike our crevice dwelling bats, crevice dwelling bats are um, communal. They like to have other bats with them. These guys like to roost solitary, so they like to be by themselves. This is a very cool and very cute bat. Thanks. So let's go see the next kind of bat do we have here. This is a male silver-haired bat. This guy is nicknamed Sean Connery. And these guys like to roost in your dead trees. So if there's tree hollows or under loose bark, um, they will be roosting there. And it's really, really important. One of the reasons it's important to not cut down all the dead trees that might be in your backyard, unless they're of course, uh, a structural problem if they're going to fall or anything. So these guys roost in dead trees. And uh, you can kind of see with the um, silver-tipped gray colored fur, mm -hmm. they blend in really well. Right there on his head is where you can, I can see it most. Mm -hmm. And these guys are, again, a foliage roosting species. Well, let's move on to the next bat. And what kind of bat do we have here? This is a female northern long-eared bat. Uh, these bats are the species that are being decimated by white nose syndrome. And in Pennsylvania, we have lost about 99% of our historic bat population, including these guys. They were hit the hardest. Um, they are known for their very long ears and very small body. And these guys are responsible for eating a lot of the mosquito-sized insects and uh, really helping farmers. Mm. I hope these guys stay around so they can continue to eat insects. Yes. Because I'm pretty sure nobody likes mosquitoes. No, especially not um, the white nose really just took out this population and the mosquitoes, their population has increased dramatically. And white nose syndrome is a cold weather fungus. Um, it's found in all of our crevice dwelling species or could potentially be found in most of our crevice dwelling species and it um, is found in caves and mines. So if you have bats in your attic or your barn, chances are most likely they were not exposed to white nose syndrome during that time period. So you want to probably invest in bat boxes so they don't have to roost in caves and help them out a little bit. Bat boxes certainly help this species a lot and uh, I hope that this species makes a comeback but being that they are a small mammal, they only give birth to one pup a year. So that is not like a rodent. These guys uh, are not in the rodent family. And uh, that one pup, if they lose that one pup, then they have to wait until the following year to reproduce. So it's going to take a very long time for their populations to increase. Well, we can hope they make a comeback. Yes, thank you. And I would like to thank the Pennsylvania Bat Rescue and Steph for educating me about the kinds of bats that she takes care of. And if you enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to 
like and subscribe, and come back next week for some more animal education.